We keep hearing about the fact that earnings estimates need to come down. Does it matter when you're looking at the technical analysis or is that factored into it? Well, look, I'm a big believer that technical things happen for fundamental reasons, and the people that make the charts that I analyze are driven by the fundamentals and the macro. So I don't want to say it doesn't matter, but insofar as my work, I do the market through the lens of prices. I don't speak Fed. I speak prices, and what mm -hmm. I see speaks volumes about what's going on out there, not just today, but what's going to continue to happen, Morgan, across asset classes, both top-down and bottom-up, as we see in the stock market each day. In 2017, Tesla shares shares broke $300 for the first time ever. In early April of that year, Tesla shares surpassed $300 for the first time ever, touching a new all-time high of $304. And according to one technical analyst, the short-term and long-term charts on Tesla continue to look downright electric. Regardless of what you think about the valuation, this stock is not going to get beat by a spreadsheet. This is a great technical setup, and it's only gotten better here. Rich Ross, head of technical analysis of Evercore ISI, said, Today, Tesla stock is currently sitting at around $215. In mid-July of this year, it almost soared to $300 again, trading at $293.34. Now, more than halfway through the year, some still believe that Tesla stock will reach $300 and that it can even happen this month. Analysts from Deutsche Bank, CFRA, Baird, and Mizuho Securities have maintained or reiterated their buy and outperform ratings on Tesla stock in July. Their target price ranges from $300 to $330. Those who don't see Tesla hitting $300 soon have a target price of between $250 and $278. Notably, the difference isn't much at all. One of the reasons people are optimistic about Tesla's valuation soaring is because of the Tesla self-driving feature. In fact, one proof that Tesla is already way ahead of the competition is that it has been developing its full self-driving software since 2016. Recent progress shows that Tesla's self-driving software is far superior to its competitor Waymo. Every Tesla is equipped with all the hardware necessary for full self-driving and a customer only needs to buy the full self-driving software package to enable it. Those who own a Tesla Model 3 and regularly use the self-driving feature in their daily commute said that no other car company currently ships a full self-driving software similar to Tesla. Even after 10 years of development, Waymo does not have a customer product. Even Cruise self-driving software is also years behind, and it does not work everywhere but only works on the highway systems and those roads that are pre-mapped by Cruise. On the other hand, Tesla's self-driving software works on any road in this world. Tesla is also a leader in the development of autonomous driving technology. The company's autopilot feature, which allows for semi-autonomous driving, has been praised for its safety and ease of use. What's more, Tesla is also working on fully autonomous driving technology, which is expected to be available soon. However, things aren't looking up for Tesla regarding this very feature. A few days ago, a new report revealed footage showing several Tesla vehicles on autopilot crashing into police vehicles on the highway. Notably, Tesla has been under federal investigation about its autopilot potentially having a problem with crashes with emergency vehicles on the side of the road. The U.S. National Highway Traffic Safety Administration NHTSA, first opened an investigation into Tesla autopilot over its possible involvement in 11 crashes involving emergency and first responder vehicles back in 2021. Since then, it has ramped up the investigation to include 16 crashes. Shortly after the announcement, Tesla updated its owner's manual to note that Autopilot now detects and slows down for emergency vehicles' lights at night. But additional similar crashes have happened since then. Now the investigation is coming back into the news because Wall Street Journal has obtained and released some in-car footage from some of these crashes. However, many were quick to defend Tesla. Many pointed out that what the recently released video shows are user errors. For one, it was mentioned that the driver was intoxicated. In light of that, there was more than plenty of time to react if the driver was paying attention. That said, if the drivers had used the autopilot as intended, those accidents wouldn't have happened. At least, that's what some say, claiming that it's hard to blame Tesla for any of this. However, it is still a bad look for Tesla because these crashes happened at the same time that Elon Musk claimed that Tesla would achieve full self-driving capability any day. Musk has long ago lambasted the mainstream media for the misleading news. 
In fact, in 2016, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that the negative media coverage of autonomous vehicles could be killing people. After announcing that all future Teslas would have the hardware necessary to reach full Level 5 autonomous driving a few years back, Musk took questions. One of the early ones was straightforward. If an autonomous car crashes, will Tesla be liable? Specifically, would it offer indemnity to customers like Volvo plans to? Musk's answer was essentially no unless the software itself was directly at fault. And then he decided it was a good time to point out something else. Anything that keeps us from adopting driverless cars is, in effect, killing people. And so, negative stories about Tesla autopilot crashes make him pretty angry. Musk said, No, I think it would be up to the individual's insurance. If it's something endemic to our design, certainly we would take responsibility for that. He likened a possible car accident to that of an elevator accident. Once you view autonomous cars sort of like an elevator in a building, does Otis take responsibility for all elevators around the world? No, they don't. What really matters here at the end of the day is, what is the absolute safety? However, the Tesla CEO didn't stop there. He continued to say, one of the things I should mention that frankly has been quite disturbing to me is the degree of media coverage of autopilot crashes, which are basically almost none relative to the paucity of media coverage of the 1.2 million people that die every year in manual crashes. Something that I think does not reflect well upon the media, it really doesn't. Because, and you really need to think carefully about this, because if, in writing some article that's negative, you effectively dissuade people from using an autonomous vehicle, you're killing people. Does it stop there? No. Comparing the relatively rare self-driving car accidents to the many more deadly collisions involving non-autonomous vehicles that occur each day, the Tesla co-founder said the attention paid to the former reflected poorly on the media. Writing an article that's negative, you're effectively dissuading people from using autonomous vehicles. You're killing people," said Musk. Musk's conclusion, of course, presumes that autonomous cars are definitively safer than conventional vehicles and will reduce deaths once adopted. This may be true one day soon, but at this point, people just can't be too sure yet. Last year, Musk once again unleashed his fury on the media. At the time, Musk blasted reports blaming Autopilot for the deadly Model S crash as completely false. Following a deadly crash involving a Tesla Model S in Texas, Tesla executives were quick to defend the automaker's semi-self-driving system after it came under scrutiny. As can be expected, CEO Elon Musk rejected suggestions that the company's Autopilot was to blame. This is completely false, he said adding that journalists who suggested Autopilot was at fault should be ashamed of themselves. However, Tesla's Autopilot engineers have claimed the automaker's leadership not only knew the software was unable to detect and respond to cross-traffic, it did nothing to fix it. These allegations came to light this week from a civil lawsuit brought against Tesla regarding a crash that killed 50-year-old father Jeremy Banner in 2019. He died when his Tesla Model 3 smashed into a tractor-trailer in cross-traffic. Autopilot had been activated by Banner 10 seconds before the collision. Neither the driver assistance software nor Banner, it would seem, saw and reacted to the other vehicle in time. It has a remarkable similarity to a 2016 accident that killed Joshua Brown, whose Tesla Model S with Autopilot activated failed to notice an 18-wheeler tractor-trailer crossing a highway. As happened years later in Banner's case, Brown's Tesla passed under the trailer, ripping the top off the vehicle and killing the 40-year-old. Banner's family, who sued Tesla shortly after his death, alleged in a court filing last week that the automaker knew about Autopilot's inability to handle cross-traffic after Brown's death and failed to do anything to fix it, leading to Banner's fatal crash. It was argued Tesla should have learned from that 2016 tragedy and either improved Autopilot to safely handle cross-traffic or made it disengage in those situations, which might have saved Banner's life. How this will affect the company's stock in the long term remains to be seen, although in the near term it's pretty obvious and it's not good. Subscribe for more.